Hey everybody, welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Omaze. I am working with Omaze to put together an experience that is super cool that you can win. Right, get this. There is a thing called Adventure Drive. It's happening this summer in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to be driving 1,900 miles from Seattle to Jackson Hole on some of the most beautiful roads ever. I'm doing it. I'm driving a Lamborghini Urus, and you can win a trip all expenses paid. We're talking about flights, hotels, meals, and a C8 Corvette to drive with a $1,000 gas car. That's what I'm talking about. Adventure Drives with me, brand new Corvette with a gas card. All of it is to benefit uh, Team Rubicon, which is a fantastic charity. I highly suggest you take a look at what they do. They uh, they really help with disaster relief. They employ veterans in disaster relief scenarios, keeping them in action of sorts and using those skills acquired in the military uh, as opposed to you know going back to being like an accountant or whatever. Uh, it's taking advantage of those untapped resources in a great way. And uh, it's Rob Ferretti's deal. He's our old friend. And um, it's going to be awesome. So go to omaze.com slash the smoking tire. That's O M A Z E dot com slash the smoking tire to enter and win this fabulous trip. And every donation supports Team Rubicon. It's amazing. Omaze.com slash the smoking tire. We are also brought to you by Auto Tempest. Listen, doesn't matter if you make a little bit of money for a living or a lot of money for a living, your time is worth money and you don't want to waste it, right? You know, it's it's one thing to be working. Work is okay. And to do work, to find something you want is okay. But what you don't want to do is double work. And autotempest.com prevents you from doing double, triple, quadruple, quintuple work, right? All these used car sites, you got to enter the same search criteria criteria over and over and over. You're digging through the same listings over and over because people, you know, they list cars in multiple places. Auto Tempest brings all of that to one place, right? You fill out one search field and it looks across the entire internet for the car you're looking for. Doesn't matter what doesn't matter whether you're browsing or really looking to buy, checking out the market, or selling, Auto Tempest is there for you, and it helps you look nationally uh, to find the best car for you. It compares those results with Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and Auto Trader. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome site, and they've been with us for a long time. Autotempest.com should be your first destination because it'll save you the most time, and therefore, it'll save you money before you even find the car. That's what I'm talking about, folks. All right, folks, on this episode, we are very fortunate to be joined by a Mr. Taro Koki. Taro is the executive producer and co-founder of GT Channel, which is a popular uh, YouTube channel focused on drifting, JDM cars, stuff like that. But before he did that, uh, he was the executive producer on a show called Best Motoring, which if you see, if you're into classic YouTube and classic JDM car shows, Best Motoring is one of the best car shows of all time. It basically featured crazy Japanese racing drivers, wheel-to-wheel racing press cars and like amazing cars sometimes and like it was an introduction into a bunch of the Japanese tuner cars uh, that we didn't get in America. So we're going to be talking about all kinds of Japanese nerdery on the Smoking Tire podcast with Taro Koki. What up, everyone? It's the Smoking Tire Podcast. Are you all as exacerbated with me at this current situation right now? I had a crushing sense of doom all day today that actually was slightly improved by a turkey sandwich and a nap. A little <laughs> bit, but but it's, it's uh, you know, every day is a new mental struggle. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We're, uh, we're, we're staying... Uh, I don't know. This we have this. This is what we have right now. The podcast. Yeah. So welcome to it. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, before we get to Taro Koki, our guest who is on the line, I want to say one funny thing I learned in the last twenty four hours. I wrote the Porsche nine nine two Turbo S story for Road and Track and made the video. Go look at it on our site. And as I and I'm currently driving a, a Miami blue Macan Turbo out, out parked outside the studio. Zach's got the video up right there, the uh, 2021 992 Turbo S. Go watch it. There was a weird embargo 
time. It was like Tuesday at 3 p.m., which I don't think is ideal for our audience. I should, Portia really needs to confer with us next time when, <laughs> when setting their embargo dates. But nevertheless, I was doing some homework, and I learned that in a quarter-mile drag race, Zach Klotman, yeah, the 2004 Porsche 996 Turbo X50, which by all accounts is a very fast car, it would lose to a 2020 Macan Turbo, both to 60 and in the quarter mile. Macan, tur- Macan Turbo quarter mile, 12.2. What? 12.2 for Macan Turbo. Wow. Yep. So think about that, folks, because <laughs> I wrote an article basically that's 2,000 words on why this the new turbo doesn't really make any sense because it's just wow. way faster than you can use and they sell one that's just still that's cheaper than that that's still even faster than you can use and we have the macan the crossover is faster in a straight line to a quarter mile and zero to 60 than the 2004 porsche 911 turbo x50 there you have it folks very cool let's go to the phones and taro bienvenue <laughs> the masked villain what up, brother? Can you hear us? What happened? I don't know. Taro, can you hear us? I can't hear you. What's going wrong? Hey, hey. There we go. There we oh, go. There, there you we. are. What happened? <laughs> are we in real time? I this was the uh, the proper art- attire for the day, you know, California and everything. Are you in Born a grocery in store? California? Are you broadcasting? <laughs> What's the rule as of today? Grocery stores, right? We have to do the mask yeah. in the grocery store. We gotta wear. We gotta wear a mask to go out. I think we need to start selling smoking tire masks. Capitalism, baby. Let's, that's, that's a, that might be a good idea. Let's Actually, become. This is an old uh, Scion racing bandana. You know, it's. I think people like uh, you and I who spend time on racetracks are awfully prepared for this because I just I've been going to the yeah. store straight up balaclava. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> My wife's like, uh, we have to wear masks to the store now. I'm like, I have the perfect tool. Do they need to be fireproof? Because I have that. <laughs> just wear a helmet. <laughs> Over your head too, and everything. Taro, I need to see your face, brother. Let's look. Yeah, there he is. Welcome to the show. Nice to be on the show. Nice Thanks for coming. Taro is a co-founder and owner of GT Channel, uh, which uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, is an, an aggregator and collector of of tuner focused Japanese car videos, among other things, drift videos and stuff like that. And uh, you were the distributor of. Best motoring, internationally hot version, the best yep. classic automotive content out of Japan ever. What's up? Hi. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, I know you're a, you're a big fan of best motoring hot version, so I'm I'm really happy to be here today, and uh, we can you know go back memory lane and uh, kind of uh, touch on the old uh, good old best motoring days and uh, well people like yeah best motoring was one of the coolest car shows ever because they did the, they did stuff that you just can't i don't think you could get away with anymore today like wheel to wheel racing press cars how does something <laughs> like that go down so so best motoring started um i think it was I think it was like in when did it start like, i saw 87 uh, is what i 87? said Seven. Yeah. yeah 87 well originally so uh, there was a car magazine called best car in japan they actually they still have it and so it was published by a company called kodansha and best motoring is the basically the the video version of best car so the guys at best car said hey we should go you know while we're at the tracks and everything we should just start shooting some some videos and it was kind of like a add on to the to the magazine for a while did then, were they were they doing the wheel to wheel racing for the magazine no, oh, okay no, no. At, at the beginning they were just like uh you know simple driving impressions not even at the tracks you know it was just like driving around hakone or you know scenic routes basically what it is like best car and best motoring is that as corny in Japanese as it is in when you translate it into English, does it just does it sound? It does. It probably is a normal sounding name for something in Japan, right? Yeah, you know, it's one of those uh, English things. You know, yeah. it's like it's best car is like yeah. combine two words together, best motoring, and you know, you, you have a product. That's usually how you name YouTube channels now, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's good SEO. The best name. 
So at what you got involved in what the year 2000, right? So sort of the midpoint yeah. of the of the production of that series, which ended for good in I think 2011. Yeah. How did you become so involved? I, so you know we were we had a business at that point already. Um, kind of we had a website actually that um, basically told it pop culture, Japanese pop culture. We wrote about and shot. Po- uh, photos about Japanese pop culture and the automotive section was the most popular section. And two of the guys that I used to work with, um, Katsu and Masa, who are now the founders of, of uh, Built by Legends. I don't know if you've heard about these guys, but um, I have not. anyways, um, uh, they came to me and said, hey, there's this thing called uh, Best Motoring and um, we should get the rights. And I, at that time, I was kind of away from the automotive scene. I, I was I was like living in South America, and I was kind of like, um, you know, not not really following automotive that much. And um, Best Motoring kind of got me back into cars. Um, so we went over there and said, "Hey, you guys have something really special. Can we do the English versions?" And to be honest with you, we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we had. We had never, um, we've done some translation works, but work, but we've never um, done any type of video production at all. And, you know, back in the day, you, you needed to go into a studio to do anything, like even graphics and voiceovers. And, you know, you, we had to. Until know, like 2005, it was crazy expensive to do anything on video. Like yeah, me and yeah. me and my friend Larry Casilla made like a video in 06 or 07 and we needed a real helicopter for it like yeah, we needed a yeah, camera exactly. that had like shot cassettes i'd never fucking seen before and had to yeah. do like thousands of dollars in transcoding like it was like craziness yeah exactly i mean there, there were no i mean in the early days of best motoring we literally had to use powerpoint and like print out the the subtitles that's and fucking, they would scan it's it, like south right? parking the subtitles <laughs> right i mean it was it was crazy and it, you know there were no gopros back then you know it was like everything was shot professionally yeah and we would get the master tapes and you know we would start by translating everything we we you know um write everything up and then translate it and then write you know a stack of like pa- uh, papers like little little we'd, we'd like have to like print out these pieces of paper with the subtitles so they can scan it and wow it. wow it's like so yeah, it's og like, lower third yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's literally it's, like south it's park incredible. cutting out paper it's yeah. very crazy <laughs> were you That's did you OG i am <laughs> did you get involved in any of the of the production of the of the series once you became the uh distributor did you only collect shot footage really no no we so we anytime they went overseas mm-hmm. uh, so our relationship grew and so I would, you know, uh, we would be invited to the, the shoots, obviously. So uh, when we could go, we'd go. And anytime they would go overseas, we would be like the coordinating producers for for them. So um, when the, any, you know, like when uh, like Sam, you know, f- was featured, Sam Mitani. Yeah, Sam Mitani. He was on. He was on our show last year. Yeah, good dude. Yeah, exactly. So we arranged that we produce that one. And when the uh, hot version came over with uh, Tsuchiya-san to do the uh, uh, American Toge series. Uh, we did we did all of that on stateside. Yeah, the American Toge series, too. Yeah, I yeah, forgot about that? that. Oh, look at the snow <laughs> one. I love this picture Zach just found of, like, snow rally cross and press cars. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Same circuit. No, that was crazy. What? It's wild. Why? How? How? What was it about the Japanese, like, was it the culture, the production of the TV? Like, wh- how? Why was it totally okay for them to like straight up be racing these cars? They, they in America, that shit just won't fly. Yeah. So you know, it started from a magazine, and it went over to. So they were legit, you know, um, moto journalists, right? At Best Car, and then they branched off. Uh, the president was actually the same guy, and he hired a bunch of dudes to do the. The, the video version at Best Motoring, and so the the first thing they did was like, okay, we're gonna, you know, if we're driving this on video and we're being shot on video, we can't, you know, half-ass anything because they're gonna see that we're like, kind of half-assing it. So 
it, it just became this thing where, you know, if we're going to take it on the track, we're, we're going full blast guys. And the, the manufacturers kind of were cool with that. They're like, okay. And they kind of got on board because um, best motoring and best car helped sell a lot of cars in Japan. So it yeah. was already a respected uh, a media outlet. So when the video started and they were like, you know, we're going to take these cars out and battle them, you know, full blast on the track. Manufacturers like, okay, you know, well, if you know, I mean, I can see some manufacturer's perspective is, OK, so this is, a, you know, it's a marketing expense. It's a press car. And, and, you know, these are professionals. And if it gets written off, you know, all right, that's the cost of doing business, I guess. But like, you know, there's episodes of uh, of the show where you see F40s and <laughs> Diablos and shit. I cannot yeah, yeah. imagine Ferrari is getting on right. board with an F40 and best motoring. Yeah. You know, so, so those are the uh, so those are the ones that that we really had to work hard to get. Um, so the Japanese cars were cool and some of the uh, European car manufacturers, the branches in Japan were cool with lending us cars. Um, but, you know, Ferrari, you know, for example, I mean, Lamborghini, I mean, all these guys, we had to borrow them from, from regular owners. That's so, so that I mean, imagine, wow. imagine an owner yeah. letting you, letting you ran wheel to wheel yeah. race their fucking F40. Exactly. That's just nuts. <laughs> So the insurance was just like, it was just like crazy. Well, oh, you could get a policy for that, huh? Yeah, yeah. So we'd get it just just for the day. So they, they would get it just for the day. And they, they, they told me about it. But, you know, there, I've, I've heard some some crazy stories about, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, well, and you guys, you like, guys, did you always start the slower cars in front so that the faster cars would move up through that pack? And so therefore... I mean, it makes the race more interesting and fair, but it also means whoever's car is in front, like they're going to be encountering more vehicles than if they had started at the back. So, you yeah, know, the, yeah. if it's private owners, you have to be like, by the way, eight cars are definitely passing you because <laughs> your car is slower. Yeah, it wasn't, We, you know, we called it reverse grid, you know, but yeah. it was, it wasn't always like that though. Um, sometimes it was just, you know, you do it, the fast cars go up front and, and they'd, they'd run away. But um, since the battles were sh so short, you know, there were only like three or maybe five laps, you know, at most. Yeah. So in order to um, get as much excitement out of the battles, you know, they, they would uh, do the reverse grid. And, and also just going back to the manufacturers, um, the fact that these, all, these were all professional race car drivers in the battle, that gave them a little bit of, uh, you know, peace of mind, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, like... Um, like Gansan, uh, uh, Motoharu Kurosawa, the, the older, older gentleman. Um, so he was actually a, a Honda, uh, factory, uh, developing driver. He was a test driver for Honda. So they were cool with Gansan going out with the NSX or, you know, the, any of the Honda cars. Right. Um, so you got to shuffle the guys who's in what car, depending yeah, on so car. Well, this dude. Can... A, yeah. So if you watch best morning for a long time, you'll see that uh, Gansan is usually in a, in an NSX during these battles. Um, you know, like uh, Nakaya is always in a Mitsubishi because he was a Mitsubishi uh, test driver. Interesting. Uh, so you, yeah. They kind of like, um, you know, chose their guy, you know, I think the in a, and a couple of things that really stand out to me from that show is it introduced me as an American to a lot of the brand name Japanese tuners mm -hmm. like Veilside and uh, HKS and a bunch of yeah. the guys that had you know these kind of complete builds. I really yeah. you know watch this watching this like tuner skyline like battle like he pulled it up was that a Sylvia or something? It was uh, Veilside. Veilside yeah. uh, Supra battling an F forty. I mean that's like oh shit that's a you know David Goliath kind of thing um i might have yeah, seen yeah. rwb for the first time on best motoring maybe um and sure, and, and definitely that. hks for sure yeah um yeah, yeah. and i think that was really interesting and i also think that they did such a good job I, it might have been the translations and like or it might have been because it was the guys were like were like yelling at each other while racing but i thought they they the racing drivers like really their personalities came through even though i had like no idea what they were saying you know, at yeah. the time yeah it was so yeah, great we, we we tested a lot with that too like at the beginning um we used um voiceovers for the race car drivers as well 
Um, but in order to get the full excitement of them yelling at each other, yeah. we started subtitling the drivers and only using VO for the narrator. And uh, funny enough, we used the, uh, the the Iron Chef guy. I don't know if you guys oh, have yeah. noticed that. <laughs> yeah, what's that guy's name? The, I forget, yeah. that, uh, uh, forget that dude's name, the Iron Chef narrator guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very funny. Yeah, so we... <laughs> no, subs, dudes, uh, subs over dubs. Always subs over dubs for sure. It was yeah. so great yeah. just seeing like the racers were the drivers were clearly having a good time, and mm -hmm. if you know one guy passes the other guy because they're in mismatched cars and they would kind of talk about the car they're in and be like ah oh, he has way more top end and you just you'd see like the racing glove gesture and the head tilt and you yeah. kind of just knew how this guy was feeling and then he'd get him in the next corner and they were always yeah. they were always having a good time and sometimes they'd comment on the cars pros and cons a little bit but it was more about just like watching it and watching the watching all these experts drive the cars as fast as possible and did that give you guys some freedom where you're like look we're not going to really comment on the pros and cons of each car we're just going to drive them and let them speak for themselves did that make manufacturers more comfortable um i think they were just naturally you know race car drivers more than any anything else um so we left like the the impression of each car uh, to the driving impression part where before the battles start. So um, if, if we do like a full feature on a car, if it's a brand new, all new car, you know, they'd take it out to see somewhere street driving or Hakone or whatever. And they, they, they'd get done with all of the, they didn't make that shit on the highlight reel. Yeah. us We didn't 20 years later, we're like skipping over that. We're like, yo, just show me yeah. the race, bro. Cut, cut to the, cut to the toge battle. <laughs> We, yeah. don't, we don't watch the actual like reviews, Zach. We just watch the yeah. silliness. That's kind of true. What was one of the? Yeah, what was some of the sillier ones you put together? Well, I mean, the, I think the craziest one that you know, well, there there are a couple crazy stories, but um, like when we tried to get the uh, McLaren F one. Uh -huh. This is wow. Story. I mean, there's like an incredible you know feat that they even got the car. Um, Hattori, one of the drivers was a uh a tag hoyer driver right so he was, he's a sponsored oh, tag yeah. hoyer driver and tag hoyer bought a car to promote their watch and kind of like the the, the relationship and they brought it to japan That's and funny. i never heard uh, about that the uh, tag hoyer owned car huh yeah hattori was like okay i think i can bring this car uh out to you know to tsukuba and mclaren was very wary about <laughs> the whole idea of, you know, taking it out on the track and, you know, going door to door with these guys that they've never heard of. Um, in the end, they, they, they actually um, okayed it and we were able to get it. But, um, you know, do, do you guys know uh, Roger Yaskawa, the IndyCar driver? So I don't believe Roger's so, no. father. Yeah. So Roger's father was, um, the head McLaren guy in Japan at the time. So it was his, it was up to him to okay or not. And he finally okayed it. And we were able to get the car um, for the show. The relationship between tag and McLaren is very interesting. And it's, it resulted in, in most recently those uh, Lanzante Porsches, which are these sort of 930 Porsches that have the tag uh, to Formula One turbo oh, yeah. F1 engines that went in the in the McLaren uh, uh, F1 cars. And uh, it's the same. Yeah. The, the F1 yeah. Lanzante. Has anyone ever actually driven one of these fucking things? Have you seen these things, Taro? No, no, no. But that relationship goes back. Oh, my God. So tag tag was working uh yeah tags turbo v6 is a formula one engine that fits in a 930 turbo and they found a bunch of them somewhere i don't know how many there were uh but they're they're selling these things now and you basically oh get God. an engine stand for your potentially grand prix winning engine but the engine stand happens to be a fucking 930 and i think okay. you can drive it Oh, so yeah, they give you this, look at this chassis plate they pull up. So here's wow. your engine and, and all the shit it won. So this says chassis, yeah. Nikki Lauda 84, Nikki engine Lauda. 34. <laughs> and then it has the history of the races and the finish. Uh, like, you know, 84 Britain, Nikki Lauda first. That's a good, yeah. that's a, that's yeah. a nice engine. Yeah. Jeez. So Porsche built the tag F1 engines, I believe, that went into the McLaren Formula One cars. And so, yeah, mm. you can you can get one of these things now if you want to be very silly. 
<laughs> uh, to take a left into uh, left field there. But it's a it's an interesting relationship between Tag and McLaren that mm-hmm. I don't believe still exists anymore. But did that what who what do they race that thing against uh, on, in the battle, Taro? I don't I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean if I mean if you Zach got found the video. Probably out there somewhere. Zach um, Zach I, found I think uh, I did. Is this just the road test or is that the uh the actual battle? I don't know. I it don't ex- know. it seems like it exists. It's in four by three. It's from nineteen ninety four. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. Here's someone mobbing it on the track. Oh yeah. Here's the I mean, we got we we're definitely trying to scrub ahead to see what they raced it against. Oh, it looks like oh yeah. Here's a race that has like uh is it kind kind of regular cars? <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a pretty this is a forty five minute episode, oh. so it might be it might be a, a montage of like race cars in the McLaren F one. Oh I'm okay. not sure. But pe- people can people can find it, but you know, you guys would have roofs out there, F forties, and then you'd yeah. have like you know the the tuner series was awesome to watch, like HK, HKS versus Veilside versus, and then like STI versus Evo versus. I mean, you just you didn't you know you never saw that stuff here then or now. You really yeah the STI yeah. versus Evo battles were were legendary. I mean that the whoever won that month. I mean, it really reflected the sales of like the following months. Wow. So, that's that's uh, awesome. Mitsubishi and and Subaru, like they were like they came really prepared. I mean, all their cars were like, you know, they were. I mean, some. It's funny because um, it's it's all public now. But um, one time Nissan really messed up because um, Tsuchiya w- was driving a R33 GTR. I don't know if you guys have heard of this story, but you know, it was like awesome right and he's like this this car is badass it's awesome you know and and um he he bought one I, I think he actually bought one and then um he realized that the car that he was driving on best motoring was like <laughs> oh no it was a ringer <laughs> i knew where you were going already <laughs> oh no yeah. and he was like he was so upset about that <sighs> yeah it was it's funny. I mean, that's it's it's like on Wikipedia in Japanese, but um, that's hilarious. Yeah, they sent a ringer out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like that's blew a good. Everybody away, right? And she was like, "Man, this is the best car I've ever driven." You know, and he goes out and buys one. I was like, "What the fuck's going on?" Here? Oh my god, that's <laughs> funny. I bet you. I bet that's happened elsewhere in the automotive journalism world. I mean, the the sure our happened. one of my favorite Chris Harris stories that he told in the podcast is that his his mother wanted just a nice uh fun to drive a uh, station wagon to take her her big dogs out in and so he goes out on some local like used you know used car place and buys this audi s4 avant for his mother and about a couple weeks later it's kind of acting up and acting weird and not driving right and he all of a sudden gets a sense of familiarity about the car and it turns out it was the very same press car that he beat the absolute balls off of oh like God. three years before <laughs> He was drifting it. He completely smoked the diff, <laughs> and he um, and he bought his own press car. But oh yeah, Zach pulled up. Zach also pulled up this the story, the legendary Chris Harris Jalopnik story, where he called out. Uh, what year was that? Twelve. Uh, twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. He called out Ferrari for uh, for their press car ringers. They would yeah. show up, yeah. you know, quote prepared or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Just putting your best foot forward. Did you have did you have manufacturers on best motoring show up with like full you know full teams and transporters and they have their yeah, their yeah. chassis oh, guys yeah. and yeah yeah I've <laughs> I've seen I've seen yeah whole teams arrive with their with the cars. They take that shit really seriously, man. Oh yeah, I, I mean the uh, the like the chief engineer would would sometimes show up. <laughs> yeah. just, just, to, just to make sure that everything's running fine you I know bet. yeah um, sometimes you won't even be on camera but um you know a lot of times they would you know come on camera too and we we did interview them but um they'd show up even without without you know an appointment for them. Just come <laughs> oh, along shit this guy's just really here huh I mean, we've we've been to car tests where there's no wheel dual racing. Sometimes it's time. Sometimes it's just a track day. Yeah. And they'll send an engineer just to make sure the car is set up well because they want your impression of the car to be as good mm-hmm. as possible. Now, just imagine yeah. if it's like this is a national TV show and, and it's, it's racing it's a race. five. Cars. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Gosh. The um and I also what you know my other favorite thing about best motoring is just how it introduced us Americans. 
to the weird, you know, JDM only versions of cars, you know, the, the Tommy Mackin and Evo, the Subaru type RA and all this shit that like maybe you saw in a magazine or maybe you saw in Gran Turismo or whatever, but mm-hmm. oh, it's like there's yeah. a real car being driven by a real guy like that. This is a real thing, you know, that yeah, was that yeah. was very important, too. Right. So like a lot of the cars that, you know, the the U.S. viewers only saw in like Gran Turismo or, you know, best, best, you know, best motoring had all those cars, right? Yeah. Like the type R's, even like, you know, type R's. And like you said, the STI's and um, special version, the tuner versions, these were all in, in you, you can either, either see them in Gran Turismo or in the game or on best motoring. And that was the only place you really got to see um, these cars like being flogged, you know, yeah, and it's like perfect for our time now because now it's like people our age, like you know, me and Zach are late thirties, and you know, the people like us, we can imp- now we can import these cars, mm-hmm. we can buy oh, yeah. them, like ooh shit. Yeah. So it's actually like a pretty good reference, you know, yeah. to to go back. Yeah. So I was at over at uh, Top Rank. You know. You, yeah, you know Sean. Guy. Yep, yep. He yeah. sold me both we my right hand drive cars. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. Uh, top rank uh-huh. importers go to importavehicle.com. If you're in California or anywhere in America, they have a lovely inventory right now. Yeah, those guys are, you know, they know what they're doing and they do, you know, things the right way. And, um, you know, all the cars that we drove back in, in the day are, you know, even the R33 from January this year, you know, you can you can import it. Yeah. You know, I've been meaning to go give Sean a visit. He's I told him, I said, the next R33 GTR you coming in, you that you have coming in that doesn't already have an owner. Um, I'd like mm-hmm. to come yeah. take it for a day and go play. I, I haven't driven an R33 before. Have you driven all three oh, really? generations? Yeah, I have. What's have. your favorite mm-hmm. Skyline generation? Um, I like... I mean, I think I like the R34. Uh-huh. It's just because I'm in love with like the mines tuned R34 GTR, you know. But um, I like R32s as well. The 33 is just not my kind of thing. I'm like, it's kind like of a-, a lot of people. I think it's kind of you know heavy and not as agile as the R32. It's not as it's not as you know menacing as R34. I'm, I think I'm with you on that, even though I admittedly have not driven a 33 and would like to have a go. But I owned a 32, and it was mm-hmm. it was 80% of the way to a 34. It was really, except for the sixth oh, yeah. gear and the power, it felt very similar to the 34. The 34 yeah, had, like, you know, mind. better air conditioning and shit, but, but, and it was, like, a nicer yeah. thing. But, like, yeah. it was, you can get pretty close to the feel of a 34, with a nicely sorted and mostly stock 32. Did they change like the computers and diffs and things much in the, between those two generations? Was it was there a lot of updates to that kind of stuff? Taro, do you know? I mean, I think they definitely updated stuff, but I don't yeah, know if there's updated. a. Go ahead. It's updated, but it's a it's um, basically the same uh, setup though, you know, hardware wise, and the computers completely you know different, but um, it uses the same all wheel drive system, same engine, you know. Uh, yeah, they just added the sixth gear, and the ratios are mm-hmm. a little different for the 34, yeah. but, like, the overall experience of driving the two cars is really, really similar. They're fucked. Mm-hmm. Those things are so nice. They're just such yeah, nice I cars. Yeah. I got to get one of those from, from Sean one of these days. Yeah. What do you yeah. got? What are you driving these days? <laughs> I'm a family man. I'm a surfer. I, I drive a Forerunner now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Forerunner's cool. I get the truck life. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So tell I us about uh, GT Channel. Oh yeah. So uh, you know we were we were just over at uh, Sean's house shooting shooting some videos about how to uh, import a uh, you know, GTR to the US. Uh, this year we're going to be ramping up our, um, our production a little bit. You know we we uh, did this uh, merger and and IPO in London. So um, I've got some funds to, to create some, some fun stuff this year, so I'm really looking forward to that. But this this virus thing kind of put a <laughs> put a hold to everything. But um, we're we're planning on um, releasing a whole bunch of uh, new stuff. Yeah, it would have been a good time to have like a big backlog of content, wouldn't? It? <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> we are we're very lucky that we get the we still have the uh, the press cars trickling through, but unfortunately. Yeah. Um, 
I had some very exciting press cars that were uh, canceled and press launches that were canceled. And so we're still we still have nice stuff to drive, but uh, but it's not the heavy hitters that we were looking forward to. But I suppose we should count our blessings that we are uh, still still working at all. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be um, Sam Mitani and uh, James McKeon from No Breaking. We have a little podcast uh, going on every month, um, but we're going to be ramping that up to every other month now because we're just sitting at home, you know, so. Um, that's why I was asking those questions. About, <laughs> oh, about Wirecast? The, the Wirecast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, if if uh, Wirecast works, there's other there's other ones too. But uh, but Wirecast mm-hmm. works. Everyone's got their own sort of sort of methods. We've just been we've yeah. we've done the additive method. We started with just sound, and then video, and then the da, and then the live, and then you know, it really kind of right. yeah. it's just cumulative. I've always been I've always been all video, so. Oh yeah, there you go. So yep. you know, I, I always want to go live, and I always want to do video. And, I know. And Sam and James are like, "Well, let's just record this on Zoom first. And <laughs> yeah, no, your first your first couple definitely don't don't try and balance the live all all at once. You'll you'll fucking yeah. lose your head. You know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> when you uh, did, you have a favorite uh, a favorite driver when you were working on Best Motoring? Did you vote for somebody, or was it just kind of like? Just watch what happens um, and smile. You know, I, I like Gonsan a lot. He's a really nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I heard, um, so so I met him. I met him um, this winter when I was in Japan for the Tokyo Motor Show. I just, I bumped into him and uh, he's like 78 years old. And um, they were telling me they went to um, Nürburgring a couple of years ago, just like maybe 20 16 they did kind of like the, this uh, best morning revival you know one-off dvd they they went to nurburgring and they had gansan you know drive a 911 gt3 and amg gtr um at nurburgring and and you know since he was like maybe 76 at the time they um they brought a couple you know drivers out there you know to take it out to uh-huh. nurburgring, you know like, okay well gansan you, you can just be you know the man and just hang out and reminisce about, you know, the good old days. And um, <laughs> once they got there, he was like, you know, I think if the old race car driver, you know, blood started boiling. Oh, yeah. was like, oh, let, me go, let me go give it a shot, you know. So he, he gets in and, you know, it's unbelievable. I mean, they, they were telling me that they he clocked like the same time as the, the younger dudes. Yeah. He was just out there. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, they, they, it comes out, you know, they put it, they, 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 they push it down, you know, and, and then they get to the racetrack and they, you know, they smell the race gas and the rubber and it's like Popeye with the spinach. It fucking comes right back. Yeah. Zach and I yeah. went to film something at, um, at Bondurant school in Arizona, you know, and Bob Bondurant's 80, 79, 80, you know, yeah. and we're filming and we just hear like, and some like ZR1 is doing like drift laps. And we're like, what the fuck is that? And it's and it's it comes over and it's and it, there's Bob getting out. And he goes, I like I like to keep my reflexes up. And he's out there fucking mobbing, still fast, mobbing. Still fast. mobbing. You know, <laughs> he he could go down at any second, but he is gonna go down at a hundred miles an hour when he does. Man, that guy. Yeah, used to, those, those, those guys. I mean, they're. I mean, you can't discount them just because they're old man they get in the car and they'll they'll just they'll just destroy it you know totally so much respect for those guys so what are uh what are some of the of your favorite things that you've done on uh with gt channel have you guys have you guys done some must see content that you should that i'd need to spend my quarantine watching well i mean i I think you should see some of our the recent stuff um we have a new show out called the tuner club um well it's it's in our fourth season now but we're shooting everything in japan this year Oh, so the the Stradale Tuner Club. That's a new one that we've um, that we just released. It's a little tuner shop, a Honda tuner shop in Gifu. Um, the first episode we did it uh, on Garage Yoshida. Um, they are um, a, a badass GTR tuner out in Nara. They're in the middle of nowhere, but all the best GTR tuners send the cars over there to get their. Um, uh, he builds full cars too, but. You know, the, the, he'll he, he does work for like Autech. You know, for Nissan. Oh yeah, Autech. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do yeah, is so, is um, what are the what are some of those like? Is there a new any any crazy trend that's happening in Japan that we have just no idea about yet over here? Or is the internet pretty much ruined any secrets that are going on in Japanese tuner shops by now? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you go to you know Daikoku Futo and you kind of can can see the trend. 
But, um, you know, they say that, you know, car culture is kind of dying off, but I don't think so though. You know, there, there are plenty of fun things going on, you know, in the tuner world. There are, you know, guys like at Ebisu drifting, you know, the grassroots thing is pretty strong. Um, I think it's so, getting a little more uh, specialized, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the, um, the men, the manufacturers are building more egg-like vehicles, but then that leaves, you know, room for, for highly specialized stuff like exosets and atoms and, uh, you know, a crazy tuner cars and race cars and drift cars and, and stuff like that. So I think that'll probably keep us going for a while. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, there, there, you know, you go to Tokyo Auto Salon, um, and it's still, you know, it's still happening. You, you got, you got the, you know, OG guys that are just like into every little detail. And then you got the, you know, the body, um, you know, uh, guys that, you know, just, just do all the flashy stuff, but you know, it's, it's all, you know, quality stuff. And then you have kind of like the VIP, you know, the kind of the Yakuza car <laughs> looking, looking ones. Have you, have you ever been to the Tokyo Auto Salon? I haven't. I've seen lots of pictures. It seems crazy. Oh my God. I you really want to see someone like Bosazoku shit. That's that. Yeah. Like, I want to see some stuff that's like, like crazy we gotta, vans we, we should and go. we should we should go and like shoot something together in japan i would love to we went to japan yeah. just to film a uh, drive on nbc sports but like i think we were only there for like four days we were working super long days i mean it was really cool i enjoyed i definitely enjoyed being there but you could yeah. i could spend a month in tokyo easily yeah easily yeah and i'd love to tokyo yeah. auto salon looks nuts what is that this, this may be a dumb question but is tokyo auto salon like uh, like SEMA or SEMA like Tokyo Auto Salon? Like the photos I'm looking at right yeah, now, I think yeah, you're seeing. Yeah, so it's, it's like the SEMA show, but just focusing on JDM stuff. Got it. Is it also yeah. like the it's like the Geneva show plus SEMA? Is there like a regular part of it or is it no, all no, tuner stuff? No, It's just tuner stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, so it is like a Japanese yeah. SEMA. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That, that I'd yeah. really like to see. I want to yeah. see the um, craziest shit that they can come up with over there. Yeah, no, this is this is a this is the place to go. You yeah, know, if you want to really get to see all the Jeff. And you know, they're they're you know, it's not just the flashy stuff. You know, there are all the all the legit shops. Um, they they have uh, booths and um, you know, new new technology. Uh, even the manufacturers, they all have booths there as well. Um, so I think that that goes on the list. I think for the trip, the pictures yeah. that Zach is scrolling through right now are pretty awesome. I mean, it looks real. Yeah. It looks like there's some really wild and weird stuff, and I like yeah. it. Yeah, only like you know the the tip of the iceberg from this show makes it out to the SEMA show. Yeah, know? like the, the no, but what about Saudi, bro? What about <laughs> what about the Saudi SEMA? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about yeah. I'm not sure about that one. Maybe they just you know everybody goes out there for that one. But no, we're not um, going to the Saudi SEMA, dude. No, thank you. <laughs> pass hard pass yeah but you know the 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 um um sema show is like only the uh, top japanese tuners that have the funding to bring their cars and even you know sell parts in the u.s um make it out to the sema show so um you know there are millions of guys in japan that don't even sell internationally you know they they just they're just kind of like a mama papa and they just run their own thing really and yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not surprised, they, but like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be like, what do I want to like? I want to go over there and scour for parts. Let's find some of these mom and pop shops. Tell you what, you weird. scour for you buy GTR air conditioning units because you yeah, can't right. rebuild those here. Yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my Skyline purchasing advice. Make sure the air conditioner works because it's really hard to get Skyline air conditioners fixed in America. Yeah, you can build a so, thousand uh, horsepower Skyline engine way easier than you could get your air conditioning fixed here. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I tried. What is that? Ale is that a Lexus? Yeah, that's a. Wow, Zach, pull that picture up. Whatever the fuck that is, Super GT or is that even a real race car? Is it a concept car? Or? It's like an LC five hundred so in there somewhere. But that's that is awesome. that is yeah. mostly canards Super and flares. GT, yeah, wow. Super GT car. That's awesome. I love Inspired, that. Maybe I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's oh, it's Lexus's own car. It's a LC500 Super GT race car in full carbon. It looks fucking Jeez. so cool, man. Yeah. LC500s, by the way, rule. That's a really, yeah, really overlooked, cars. awesome, awesome car. Have you fucked with one of those yet? No, no, I haven't. Call I've, Lexus, um, get one. James has driven one on our on uh, for our show, and he he did a review on him, but he loved him. 
I've done like 1,000, 1,200 miles in them. Oh, it's the best. They're so good. I think they just came out with the convertible, right? That's an excuse yep, to yeah. go. Get, let's yeah. book it. Let's book the yeah, 500 convertible for sure. Um, I really like your show on GT Channel, that My Drift Challenge, where uh, oh, yeah, it's like it's like someone who has a, a drift car that they've built, then they go out to you know Willow Springs, and it's them versus pros, but oh, in cool. their car. Oh, which nice. is really interesting. It's like, so you see a person who built the car and loves the car and like they drive the hell out of it and then they give it to like James Dean or somebody else and it and then their line is perfect. But it's a really cool competition because it's kind of like one person has all the inside knowledge of how that car works and the other person is amazing. <laughs> Wait, so they both drive the guy's yeah. one car. Oh, all right. Sorry. Right, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Uh, yeah. It's really cool. And it's so the, literally like put professional in your baby and he just gets to beat the shit out of it. Oof, that's yeah. tough. Yeah. And they, we give them uh, only three runs to practice too. So the the pro only gets like three runs, like really, like no no practice ever. So he has to get into this like beat up 240 that this kid drove, you know, all the way from Canada. And, you know, Matt, Matt Powers was our guy for that episode. Um, but he has to go in there and compete with them. And, you know, the, the guy knows the kid from Canada or wherever, you know, he knows his car inside it now. He built it himself. Um, so this one, this one was the one with, uh, Teddy, um, with the R32 skyline. What do so, you, I wonder, yeah. hmm, I really who, like it. who's better that's that. I mean, that's a good, that's a, I like this challenge because it's like, does the guy who knows the car, is he going to kill it or the guy that's super good at driving? Can he just get in anything and kill it? Yeah, like mm. how how quick can the pro adapt? Yeah, because so we because we know some pros that are especially if they're precision drivers in movies, like they need to be able to learn a car quickly. Yeah, and be able to get that slide and hit that mark and stuff. But not everyone can do that. It's yeah. a really special skill to have, even yeah. if you are a pro racer or a drifter or something. And then you've got sometimes these people who build their own car, who have never driven like a good car like they don't know what yeah. you know taro exactly. like when we were filming our show tuned uh for for drive there'd be people that would build this crazy thing and i go oh and i'd, I'd see the thing they built and i'd go other than this what is the fastest thing you've ever driven and it would ha it would be nothing fast. <laughs> like like there was a guy who built just this bonkers Corolla it was like a 1975 Corolla with a supercharged 1UZ in it and it was just it was Mad Max as hell and it and he had literally never driven any any sports car of any kind yeah. besides this so he had absolutely no idea what good was <laughs> Yeah, how a car is supposed to perform. Right, I mean, and so here I go. Journalist. He's never been in a performance car. He's not a race car driver. He's never been in a fully set up car. So he has no no idea. Right. right. He has no, no standard. <laughs> Zach, has, Zach has pulled up the video so you can see the car. It was a, it, here's the most shocking thing about it, and I mentioned this car specifically, not because I was surprised at how bad it was, but because I was surprised at how good it was. This guy w was either a savant of savants or just the luckiest dude on earth that happened to build something that landed right smack dab in the middle of awesome. Um, <laughs> but it's, I just think it's very interesting, especially to go back to your show you know like mm -hmm. what if we put the guy who built that car in you know a stock 240 or or whatever something that would be easy to slide but is like not his car you know yeah yeah that actually um, be a fun i think a fun like MythBusters style twist to the end of that show right mm -hmm. yeah you flip it yeah. like yeah put you in something normal and see how you do yeah like you just get like a, a stock camaro ss or something and then put both drivers in the camaro and be like, now let's mm -hmm. see, you know what I mean? I think that could be an interesting twist. Yeah. yeah. You can have that one the, for free, buddy. <laughs> the um, the pro has won every single episode, though. Ah, so I guess <laughs> I guess we do know the answer to that. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. They just have their 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 width of of uh, like driving different cars and knowledge is just so much of an advantage. Yeah. Like, as you say, these guys have never driven any high performance car most of the time. Right. Yeah. So they only know their car. So, um, it's the, their sweet spot is so small, yeah. you know, compared to like these drivers that can drive anything 
really well. Well, it's a snowball so. effect. I mean, the more experience you get, the the quicker you adapt, and the quicker you adapt, the more experience you get, and round and round and round and round and round. When I first started driving, when I was like in high school, I used to think that some stick shift cars were very easy, and other stick shift cars were very hard. Like, nah, not really. You just need to adapt to like how wh- where does this go and how fast. And the more yeah. you do it, the easier you can uh, adapt. Uh, not so hard, but I'm not surprised the pro one. That's uh, yeah, that's a good bit of data. <laughs> have Have you had a uh, someone bring a car out with hand controls yet? That might be an, an interesting twist. Mm-mm, no. Okay, Mm-mm. like because uh, you know, like Chair Slayer. Um, if you yeah. brought his car out, that would be interesting yeah. to see if a, if a pro pro can adapt to that. You know, I, I know that yeah. Forsberg did it with him a couple years ago, and it was really interesting uh-huh. to watch them try to connect those wires like hands yeah. to brain instead of feet to brain. That would be interesting. Well, I mean, for, for some drivers, you know, just going from left-hand drive to right-hand drive is, is difficult. So if hand controls, I, I, I'm i sure it's a whole new... Yeah. You, know, you ever drive a tra- or... car with hand controls, Taro? <laughs> huh? You ever try it? Hand controls? Uh-uh, no. It's not that hard, actually. It's, really? Yeah, you meant you mentally it's hard, but, but actually the mechanics of it are not that hard. I mean, I don't know about... Um, chair slayers he's got some crazy custom deal but i just i've driven a you know like a regular sports car that has basically just a a, a lever and you pull it for gas and and you push it for brake and it's actually not that hard you you get it's really? it's actually fairly easy to get used to yeah yeah what's hard is yeah, um at, you don't really think about it when you're driving normally but like uh it, literally keeping tension on a lever imagine driving for an hour and the whole time you have to keep tension on this lever. That's a muscle group you're not really you're not really yeah. thinking about, you know? Yeah, I mean our, our legs get a little tired after a long drive yeah. from holding your foot in that position. So imagine your hand isn't used to it. Yeah, the best thing to ever happen to paraplegics in cars is radar cruise control. Radar cruise control is like a game changer if you're rocking hand controls. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, it looks like we have a lot of questions. Do you have questions for Taro? Uh, well, we got on the a line? few, yeah. We'll, we'll go through uh, just his questions. Um, Jonathan Casco says, Taro, do you think that Best Motoring will be able to stay active going digital only since you guys stopped DVD sales? Well, they stopped the the Japanese production uh, back in the in 28, uh, when was it, like 20. 20- 11. 11, I think, so, is what I saw on Wikipedia. Yeah, so all the things that you're seeing on, on YouTube right now on the Best Motoring Channel is, um, that's all old archive stuff. Um, so if if we want to revive it, yes, definitely it'll it'll come, you know, only on digital. Um, although on Amazon Prime in Japan, you can still see um, new hot version. Oh, really? They're uh, still Amazon. making it? New content? Yes. Yes. Every every other month. Um, so what happened was when they, they uh, stopped production in Japan, um, the former editor of Hot Version uh, started up his own gig, and he went to Kodansha and got the rights to create new episodes. Um, and he's been he's been at it um so there there are new episodes of uh hot version still out on uh, amazon prime in japan I'm, I'm not sure if you can find any on in in the u.s but um i know in japan can you get best can you get old hot version or old best motoring on amazon prime that would be awesome um well on the best motoring channel on youtube you can you can find the old ones oh okay cool oh look does that say yeah. Get it on. Looks like I mean, you, can, you get, can get it for a dollar. Get it for a dollar on Amazon Prime you can get a hot too. Version for a dollar on Amazon Prime. All right. There you go. Uh, yeah, available. Some of those are ours too. Like the American Toga. Those are the oh, old, yeah, old episodes. Are yeah. Ours. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think it would be possible to to do a a modern best motoring in America? Like, if we went to networks, could we sell that? Would anyone insure that? Would manufacturers participate in that? I don't know, but that's that would be something that I would love to, you know, get going. That's my it, fucking dream, dude, to start that yeah, show know, again in America. I know, I know. I've, it's I've my dream, bro. That. It would be so yeah. great. We could get the funniest drivers out there. I mean, we know all of them. It would literally yeah. be people that like it would just be our fucking friends. It would be like Turk and Forsberg and Lee Keen and like four other 
people that we know that are hilarious and they just yeah. scream at each other and race cars, dude. We should no, really well, we can mix it up with the original Japanese guys too. I mean, oh, we can, it'd be we can great. fly a couple of them out here and oh, it'd be you know, great. Of course. Be down to it. Absolutely. You know, Tsuchiya, Oritos, you know, still young, Taniguchi, he loves he loves coming out here too. Yeah, they're they'll, still in the game. Yeah. What yeah, else you got, Zach? Um, Tar, do you have a craziest uh, Toge battle story or just like do you have a favorite shoot or a favorite story from the series? Um, I think the one that we were involved in and kind of comes to my mind is when we shot Senna. Um, so this was uh, before my time, obviously, uh, when we shot Senna, but Senna was in Japan for the F1 Grand Prix in Japan and um, Honda um, had him out at uh, Suzuka for, to test drive and show the press the new NSX Type R. And the best motoring crew was asked to film this because they were the only guys in town that knew how to shoot uh, cars, you know, in a in a professional way at the time. Still, is this the heel so, toe video? Is this the yeah. the Senna heel toe video? Yeah, yeah. Oh it's shit! The, the, this is like the most uh, famous video ever. Yeah. So so we shot that. Well, the best motoring crew shot that, and we had the archives. And this was in ab- about two thousand. Um, when we started creating the English version, um, the Senna Foundation contacted us and said, "Hey, you know, we're, we're, we, we, we've heard about this, you know, uh, unicorn of, of footage of of Senna um, driving, you know, because there's not a lot of footage of him driving anything else besides a Formula One car, right? He's driving a stock NSX Type R." And um, we were kind of like in loafers and white and, socks. And, Don't bury the lead, and, Taro, in fucking yeah. loafers and white socks. Right, <laughs the right. white socks. And, Pull it up. Yeah. Zach's got it ready. He's got the white socks pulled up. Exactly. We, we can't white play it, socks, but we can't play it. But see? we can show you the freeze frame of the white okay. socks. <laughs> yeah. See, it's if you if you can see this, it's shot completely like best morning. Yeah. We did all the camera work, and and shot this thing. It's it's one of the best uh, driving videos of all time, honestly, because it, so it it's think, there because of what you said. There's so few videos of him driving anything else. Not to mention mm-hmm. camera on his feet, camera on yeah. tack. I mean, that's I learned to heel toe in that video. Frankly, that's yeah, that's I mean, what I used. Yeah, no, no one you know used to put the camera on, on the feet. You know, only we're, we're the only ones that ever did that. How so. big was that camera? The foot camera. <laughs> it, was a fucking oh, it was like one of those small lipstick cameras. Oh, yeah. Oh, the wow. little guy. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was a little guy, but it, it was connected to a, a, re, a recorder. Yeah. So you, know, you had like a giant refrigerator sized box in the trunk. <laughs> with exactly. Little, little exactly. You know, we, we had we had a big box. If you can if you watch some of the best motoring, you see in the drive in the passenger seat, there's a big black box and we you know, we, we'd cover it up with, with black, uh, with like a black piece of cloth. Yeah. So it wouldn't be showing, but, uh, it was the video recorder was, was in the passenger seat the whole time. Cause we didn't have, you know, GoPros. Back yeah. In the day. You got a slate, you got a slate, like 20 cameras together and recorded tape. It's yeah. fucking gangster. Yeah. It's old school. Yeah. Yeah. What else you got? Awesome. Um, uh, Trent Schaefer asked Tara, what's your opinion on infinity? I guess in general, he was thinking about a 2012 G37, but I think he's just like, you have a lot of tuner car experience, Japanese car experience. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, well, that's kind of a, uh, that's kind of random, you know? <laughs> we got a couple, we have one more. We get uh, random. We got a couple of random, random, but they're, they're aimed at you, so. Okay. Um, well, I, I mean, they're Nissans, you know, I, I like Nissans. I mean, they're. Um, I think it's a it's a it's a good good brand. I mean, go for it. I mean, which which model is he talking about? Has he? He said G thirty seven. G thirty seven. They're very comfortable. There's something amazing though. Like what you said is totally true, but it's what Infinity wants to get away from. Is like, well, they're Nissans, and it's like factually <laughs> accurate, and you know. But Infinity is like, damn it, <laughs> damn it, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't say that. Maker of perfectly forgettable but otherwise fine vehicles. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. I haven't driven a new Infinity in a while. We should probably try and get a new Infinity. I haven't driven whatever that Red Sport one. They have turbos now, right? I drove that one in the dirt for, right? for drive last year. It's fast. Is it? it is fa- I mean, you get in the you get in it and you go, oh, I've seen this interior before <laughs> several times. Uh, they haven't changed much in that front, but 
the engine is very strong. It's very quick. We and the all drive did a pretty good job. And I mean, they're very friendly. They were like, you're going to do what? You're going to drive it on a rally course? Absolutely. Here you go. <laughs> Sounds very, good. very encouraging. Yeah, we should call them and try and get one. I like that. Get I a, like a that. quarantine ride. Um, last one for Taro is uh, from Dylan Boshaw, and he says, are black top beam swaps from Altezas a special enough motor to be a worthwhile swap in an RA26 Celica GT liftback? Whoa. He recently blew a softball size hole in his engine. Oh. Can you break down it's that question? Do we need to back it up? Can you break one, that down a little time. bit? He he, he he blew has his an, motor. He has an RA26 Celica GT liftback. Okay. Pop the motor. Needs a new motor, and he's looking at an engine from an Alteza IS300. Is that special enough for the car it's going into, or would you do something else? Oh, is that special enough? Which uh, is a, what's a R, what's a liftback Celica? Is that a, is that a like an old like seventies eighties? How, boxy how one. old do we are we talking about? Is that like the? Um, oh, it's that uh, one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's like that's it's twenty three. Uh, seventy seventies. It's seventies. Wow, an IS three hundred engine in a seventies Celica would be badass. I mean, it, it would be that would be cool. It'd be kind of like an old okay, like yeah, yeah, Hakoska yeah. kind of right. Yeah, yeah. Ish? Yeah. I think that That'd engine would be plenty special in a fucking old ass Celica. That'd be cool. And the engine would work. It'd probably work. Which is what you want. <laughs> First gen IS300s have really aged well, haven't they? I, they yeah, I still want one. I, there's yeah, some. Yeah. There's none left, but they're <laughs> fucking nice, man. They're, they're all they're, pretty haggard that are left or yeah. expensive, and they, they have bad gas mileage and low horsepower. <laughs> Which is why I didn't buy one. It's a good combination. It's really, it's the combination uh, that, that really that's sets it off. Um, but that's it for questions. I would go for the swap, though. I would go for the swap. Yeah. Uh, Taro, we have uh, we got a bunch of like other random like consumer advice questions, which we'll go to. But we we don't need to waste your time on those. We can send you on your way. But what do you? This is the benefit of fucking Zoom. You don't have to linger for the bullshit. Uh, what do you want right. to plug other than GT channel on YouTube? Uh, what do you want to plug? Well, uh, yeah, go uh, find us on on uh, YouTube, GT Channel, um, and gtchannel.com. Uh, but mostly go to our YouTube channel, GT Channel. Um, like and subscribe, a, people. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, please. And uh, we have an exciting uh, network, too. Uh, we uh, It used to be the GT Channel Creator Network. Now we're just calling it Creator Formula. Um, we are working with a uh, technology group uh, that is part of our company now um, and you know these guys are really smart guys and you know Matt I explained to you a little bit about what, what we're doing over there but um, it's it's a, a really um, it's so advanced to be honest with you that half the time when these guys are, are speaking to me uh, I really don't even understand what they're saying <laughs> <laughs> but it's like Taro you go you go and keep on making content our technology, we're going to use AI to flush your content through this pipeline and we're going to mark up all of your videos and your videos are going to be able to, uh, you, we're going to be able to link your videos just like the rest of the internet. So I was like, well, that means that I can, I can put e-commerce links or links to my channel or links to my friend's channel or links to products that appear in the videos all in the videos. So yeah, basically it, it, it recognizes things in the video and you can yeah. link like if you put hype, uh, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Tara, I remember this from the from the call last week. If You're you have a, way an, better than I am. if you have an AEM intake in your engine bay yeah, and you show a shot of the engine bay, the viewer could click on the fucking intake in your engine bay and go to the e-commerce site. Whoa. It's was that correct, Taro? I think I think that's yeah. about right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, and yeah. It, so, and the software spots the 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 stuff somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The AI does this video recognition, and it can recognize. So if we went and <laughs> facial went recognition is used for tuner parts, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, exactly. I like it. It would it would take forever, right? If we did it manually, but the AI does it for you. So that's the beauty of it, and we're testing it out on GT Channel. But all of our creators and our creator formula are in our network will be able to test this out pretty soon. So we're really excited about that. So also, you know, find us, you know, creator formula and, uh, you know, get take advantage of this uh, new technology that we're developing. Sounds interesting. 
Check it all out at GT GT Channel. Thanks, Taro. I really uh, appreciate you. your time. And Thanks, I guys. we need to figure out how to to pitch best motoring to somebody. Someone that needs it. to fucking make it. And I think we need, probably need to start with the insurance company. <laughs> Maybe we, we need to get an insurance company on board, but yeah. Let's, I'm tight with Haggerty. Maybe they'll, you think Haggerty wants to roll those dice? That would be amazing. What if best motoring is brought to you by fucking Haggerty? That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Brought well, to you by Haggerty. It I would, mean, it would be sick. If it's anybody to insure it, it, sh it would be those guys. Right? I know. I know. They like to have fun. I, they, they do. Those guys like they they're interested. I'm going to call them. They're interested in weird between shit. Between <laughs> all the guys that we know, you know, between all the guys that we know, there's got to be someone that wants, you know, to. I'm sure people want to do it. I just I think the hardest part is going to be the insurance. And I think the second hardest part is going to be the manufacturers. I think I think that's going to be the it, finding manufacturers that are going to let you wheel to wheel race their cars is going to be very to hard. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, know, maybe it was just the 90s thing. I know, I guess. There's there's lawyer there's way more lawyers now. <laughs> A lot more lawsuits. Yeah. Too many lawyers. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming down, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Happy quarantine. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Wear your mask. See you yeah. later. Thanks, Tara. All right, bye. Ah, uh, for the rest of you folks who have uh, car questions for us, thanks, thanks, Tara. I like this. This is see now we can now we we're doing the partial guest. See that's cool. So now we can we can get kind of best of both worlds. Maybe we can get get a thing going in the future where guests call in like mid show, or that that might be something that makes Zach have a panic attack while producing. I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it would work if they join the same meeting. I think yeah. it'd be okay. The technology. Seems really cool that Taro was just talking about, except all you need is like the CHP to get a fucking phone with that technology to go pop your hood, bro, and then just Ooh. just just wave the wave the phone over and it goes. Dring! Oh, you've got Aftermarket. you've Aftermarket. got fucking no cats, huh? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's pretty impressive that it can just look at a frame though and just like pick stuff out. When he told me that shit, I was like, get the fuck out of here! No, you can't. And there and they said they said. He's like, he said, I mean, they said, obviously it's not, it's not perfect, but like, that's the business that they've got is that is to do that. I mean, I don't know. It's if not it works just, for your face to unlock your phone, right? It's got to be able to recognize something. That's true. And it's actually, well, there's far fewer intakes in the world than there are people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Depending on if you have to program them all in or not. I don't yeah. Know. I remember the first, the, when they first started doing the face recognition and all Asians could unlock every iPhone. Yeah, that was a big <laughs> was, PR problem. That was a big racism that was problem. really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my God. All right. Let's go back to the people and, uh, and fucking take off the tight, Zach. I can't look at me anymore. Thank uh, you. Someone said $5 for Ben Chen's dead Porsche. Oh, I had that on my list. Yeah, I wrote at the top of my list today. Ben Chen fucked up. <laughs> Here's a dude whose name I don't really speak very often because I don't think he deserves it because I don't think he's a nice person. I've never met him. Everything I've ever heard about him. And I mean, everything is bad. Everything I've heard about him and not just cars is bad. Um, he <laughs> he had a fucking rough day yesterday. He. Um, like five blocks from his own crib in New York City, trashed a Carrera GT modified by Gimbala. He fucking smashed it into a van at high speed on 11th Avenue, destroyed the whole front half of the car. <laughs> and then with a million people around filming him, attempted to drive out of it. Yeah, that was very, and it was, there were cops like, all like he got out place. of the car and talked to them and he got yeah. back in and then started and tried to go like, I mean, the, the ment his mental space there is not on point. Cocaine is a hell like, of a drug. Yeah. I don't know if he's drunk or something's going on, but uh, the, the hubris was impressive. Yeah. yeah. And Someone doesn't hear no a lot. I am impressed the car started again. I mean, you look <laughs> at the front of this thing and it is ready to be salvaged and it started I mean he drove away from one location down the street yeah. with like one of the rear wheels was cocked at 45 degree angle and yeah. it like left the scene which yeah. it didn't look like it could do it does say something for the reliability of the Carrera GT and the mid engine <laughs> and the mid engine although yeah he lost all of his coolant from the front radiator you know what I mean yeah I like, wouldn't be able to do laps you wouldn't you wouldn't make it very far but he made it like six blocks I mean this is just it's destroyed and he had, totally that guy destroyed. has written off that I know of three supercars. He's that picture you've got there. That is a 
what I call another unforced error. He he fucking sailed this thing. We pulled this up back in 2013. We pulled up the Google Maps link. He he was driving on a, a gold rush rally in a rented McLaren 12C Spider, and exited the road deep into the triple digits and hit like a storage a self storage place we pulled up the location on google maps the storage unit was like 200 yards away from the highway he fucking sailed that thing so far off the road it was amazing and he also uh trashed uh a murcielago murcielago sv after he was denied entry into a cars and coffee in la in woodland hills because he was driving like a dick and then he left in a huff and decided to fucking take out his aggro in the car as he left in a huff and crashed it. So he's like really good at driving. That's my point. Drug charged with drugged driving says update the drive. from today, yeah. Yeah, I mean cocaine is a hell of a drug. I'm not sure exactly what drugs he was on, but I'm betting coke is one of them. Crashing your Carrera GT and trying to drive it out is about the cokiest thing I could think of. It's confidence powder. From what, <laughs> it's extremely from What I have observed in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People that can't put their shoes on are like, I'm going to start a business <laughs> and a band tonight. You're like, you aren't starting anything. Guys, coronavirus is fucking keeping people inside. I, I know what we do. Let's do standing miles down 11th Avenue. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like it, the roads are empty. I, you know, it. Yeah, but if but if like four guys went out and just like street drifted and it was you know shot it and they did it well didn't hit anybody like we'd all be sharing that video because it'd be cool. It's but a this, fine line between clever and stupid. You, between, you know, <laughs> glory and defeat, right? Yeah, God. <coughs> such yeah. a bummer. This I mean, car is dude, so nice. I mean, look, affluenza. That's a hundred percent affluenza. Remember that kid in Texas yeah. who never had a consequence in his life. This is where you end up. Well, it's, uh, I can't remember who did it once, but it was the math of like, like a Lamborghini to a billionaire is like a t-shirt to me. Oh, me, I, I did that you know, math if you too. actually, and, it, and it's like, no, no, really yeah, like yeah. the percentage the of their, the scale, which is an interesting thing to, to see. It's like, you know, li- today I donated a t-shirt that I'm never going to wear. It was like right. a shop shirt that someone gave me, which was cool. But I was like, I'm never going to wear this. This is. If you it's were crazy. a billionaire, you giving that shirt to somebody would be the same as someone giving you like a Lamborghini. Right. Yeah. 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 I did that math once and I got very depressed about it. The economies of scale. It was someone else did the other, the, did a similar version of that scaled math, which was like, uh, how much is the difference between a million and a billion? And it's like, if you had a million seconds, it's like 13 days. And if you had a billion seconds, it's like, 20 years it's like 20 years it's like a whole that's a great way to look at it yeah yeah a million seconds what does that say Uh, a million seconds a billion seconds is about four months shy of 32 years (laughs) yeah and a million seconds is like two weeks a million seconds is is 11 and a half days yeah wow that's a scale 11 and a half days 32 years and Apropos of our our uh, current financial situation, a trillion seconds <laughs> is thirty one thousand seven hundred and ten <laughs> years. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, if you have so much money where money no longer has any value, that's how you treat. Oh, here's the video. Look at this. Boom. I mean, I'm, for people listening, for people listening, just uh, go to Instagram and look up Broadway Auto NY. All one word. Um, security camera footage of. Uh, yeah. It's said I mean, GT just slot, It's going straight across the road, point Com- straight, loses it. I mean, coming it, in I think it real hits a bump hot and just starts drifting, and then just drifts right into a parked minivan. Luckily, I don't think anyone was in it. And I'm I'm amazed watching this. How look the minivan, Bro, the minivan moves minivan. five car lengths, yeah, and the, it jumps in the air. Yeah. I mean, this is a good lesson in just. The Here's a question for you, accident. Zach. It's really bad. Hypothetical situation. Do you think that minivan could have done zero to 30 miles an hour faster under its own power <laughs> or faster by being rear-ended by Ben Chen, coked out in a, in a, in a Carrera GT? Well, there's no way it's getting out of the hole like that, Bob. I mean, <laughs> He does a wheelie. It, it does. The van does a wheelie. Front the wheels front wheels, come, wheels off come off the ground. I really hope no one was in that van. But yeah, that's the fastest that van has ever accelerated. Jeez. I mean, the force of a car hitting another car. Because you don't. 
I don't know. We don't see it that often. If it's and if it's in a race car, like you know, two NASCARs are going 200. Yeah, they kind of touch and slip. I mean, then the crashes can get really bad. But it's just it's a more controlled environment. This is like bro hitting a parked <laughs> car at 90. <laughs> God, <laughs> car is not slow. Uh, yeah. No. Well, those are the thoughts. Take up bicycling. Bicy- take up bicycling. Thoughts? Question mark. Give, give up your license. Can't do it. Let's see. What is the quietest daily driver for fifteen grand? Miguel Flores asks. Uh, used LS four hundred. Correct. Oh yeah. What is the C C D of that car? Was drag coefficient low? Like twenty nine or two on the twos? Yeah, it was low. Like that's another yeah. that's another piece of quiet people don't think about. Also, they wind. don't think about their tires. Also, really true. I mean, huge, huge spread between yeah. loud tires and quiet tires. And it's both. It's like compound and mm-hmm. width. Like and, the, tread and tread pattern. pattern. Mm-hmm. Like all those things mm-hmm. matter a ton. Um, shout out to people that did English translation on Best Motoring. Mm. Um, thanks for making crazy good content in the crazy times. I thank you guys for your donations during these weird times. Yes. Thank you for paying our rent monies during yeah. this time. Uh, in our opinion, what is the most overlooked sports car from Laksha Pratap? Audi TTRS. It's the best car nobody ever talks about. I fucking had a great time on that episode of Drive mobbing the TTRS. Even on the track, it was great on the track. So much fun. Very fast. Yeah. And extremely moddable, extremely durable when modded. That five-cylinder engine has a cool sound. Uh, and is very very stout and robust. Mm-hmm. That thing can and make huge power. Huge power. There's a guy in, in Venice who's got one. He's still driving around on no tags. It's painted chalk. He's driving wow. around no tags, and it's got an APR license plate frame. He's running something hot because he's got the fucking super burble tune going with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's that you know it's the five cylinder, so it's that real gutter roll down low. And uh, he's this dude's fucking stunting this thing. He's real happy to be driving it. And when we did one lap of America, I was shocked at how fast. Uh, this thing, the the TTRSs were uh, for their displacement, which in one level of America they divided three liters, and so it's a two point five, which is uh, which is good. But I think that's the best sports car nobody ever talks about. Zach, Very true. Any, anything to add in that? What else is great that nobody really talks about? There's not a lot of well, secrets I mean, great out thing, there. Yeah, great things are usually talked about. So <laughs> yeah. that's what makes them great, usually. Yeah. I mean, I think the RS3 or the uh, the TTRS gets overlooked because the RS3 is its yes. cousin. Yeah. And it's kind of the more practical one. And, yeah, you know, offers very, the very same similar. thing. It's a similar feel. But there yeah. is something about being in a coupe versus, I was just thinking about this, like even if you were in a car that had the same chassis, same everything, if they like, if they could put you, you know, put some kind of, like veil up that made you think you're in a coupe versus a four door it would feel more focused just because you wouldn't have as yeah. much light coming in and as mm. much visibility so i wonder if the TTRS well that's like why they're doing the four door coupes oh good yeah that's the thing hey you can have your cake and eat it too that's the thing and yeah. the coupe suvs um all right thojo says what percentage what percent of the e36 m3 experience can i get from a quote regular 328i uh and then what percent of NSX experience can I get from a Prelude or Integra? <laughs> uh, I mean, on the second one, I'd say turning the key can be very similar, <laughs> and that's and maybe the chimes, yeah, and a couple of the switches. That's about it. Shifter feel, good shifter, shifter feels good. good shifter yeah. feel you could get. I mean, you know, a Honda engines, you know, a really nice, well tuned Honda Civic engine is a lovely thing and is stands on its own merits i mean it's not an nsx but like you could have i've driven f- five or six really good civics that are cheap not ex- five grand seven grand not not expensive yeah great high revving motor double wishbone suspension decent set of shocks lightweight wheels decent tires and and you're there um so you can not it's not it's not an nsx but it got that cool that uh intakey honda sound uh in good inputs and good ride quality and so you can get some of the way there and as far as the bmw thing 20 years down the line a lot of the way there <laughs> 20 years down the line the difference between an m3 and a 328 is a lot less than it was when those were brand new cars uh that's true yeah you can get get a new one and just boost it and you know turn the turn the wick up with, with i mean with an e36 the, you'll feel the difference in the engine but i told him just get like get an e46 
yeah. 325 and yeah. that has like the same power as the E36 M3. Yeah. It's a little heavier, but I feel like that's the closer comparison. If you can afford an money. E46 325 8 or 30, it's a much nicer car. That will be a cheaper car than an E36 M3 cuz everyone who has an E36 M3 is trying to ride the bring a trailer enthusiast. Uh, the wave. Mar- yeah, for yeah. sure. That's why I I moved up to E46 because the good E36s were like $9,000 for an engine that is like, Nyeh. yeah, and and then you could jump to a 46 for like 11. Yeah. But so at the lower stage, way, way, way cheaper. Yeah. Also, a really nice E30 is better than a middle of the road E36. Oh, yeah. Like a 325 oh, yeah. IS that's in pretty good shape. That's a really nice thing. It is. Yeah. And the build quality is higher. Yeah. I think. Um, what food do we miss eating since the quarantine? It's not so much the food, because we can get a lot of things delivered, and I can, I'm a good cook. I miss f- actually going to restaurants and so being in a, a big in groups of people, realizing there's people outside our fucking house. <laughs> you know? I, I just I, mi- I I miss a little bit not having to do the cooking cleaning. Like I've done that for mm-hmm. a couple weeks, and like I'm I'm enjoying. It's kind of meditative in a way, like to get away from my work day. But at a certain point, I just want to like sit down and have someone yeah. bring the thing. I'm cooking um, like five nights a week, so um, because it's either cook or order. It's right. not like cook or go out, and there's not a lot of really. I mean, there are some, but not a lot of healthy options for ordering. So we're trying to trying to do that. But there's some real good places that deliver though in our area. I'll be honest, it's not been food wise. It's not been a huge sacrifice. Yeah, we haven't had that me. yet. I hear Jeff said in New York, like grocery stores are down to bare essentials. Oh, I, was, really? I, I sent him a photo. I was like, hey, man, you should get a basil plant because I got one for two bucks. <laughs> yeah. It's cheaper than buying fresh basil in the package. Yeah. And it's a great, it's like a cool thing to have in your kitchen counter. And he's like, you don't understand. <laughs> so, you know. I learned the we're, we're cutting, spoiled. the recycling the green onions a couple weeks ago, which has worked out really well. How do you do? What do you mean? If you buy green onions, uh-huh. you, you cut them. Yeah. And now the bulb parts at the bottom that you don't use, stick them in a glass of water, put them in the windowsill. They'll grow again. No shit. They regenerate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently low income people have known about this for a That's very fantastic. long time and dumb assholes like me are just figuring it out yeah do you need more nutrients like nope. soil or no you need a water what? in a glass that's awesome <laughs> they just keep growing that is yeah. fantastic not indefinitely I will but try you that. get at least at least two more rounds of them two rounds of yeah that's impressive yeah you all do. right i'm into this i'll give this a shot <laughs> uh dante casali says if hollywood remade american gigolo today would jillian still drive a benz sl to attract la women or would it be an suv today i don't think i ever saw that movie i have never seen american gigolo i'm sorry i'm trying to make a list i'll write it down i'm trying to make a list of movies i've never seen uh that, I, that i'm kind of embarrassed that i have never seen i watched taxi driver i had never seen taxi oh. driver believe it or well, not well if you have yeah it feels like it's four hours long it, it does feel like it's four hours long it's not as slow as some other movies from the 70s jodie foster was very good i was impressed with her she's very good yeah she was very good and i really enjoyed harvey keitel's character the pimp oh he was of course. hilarious he's good i thought de niro's performance was eh i mean it was 50 years ago yeah, like he, he's still learning i think i think uh jodie foster's parents no jodie foster had to be interviewed by a psychiatrist yeah. to get that role because it was so like adult and yeah. she was like 14 when she played it and they had 12 they had to like interview her and be like this is and and they said she passed with flying colors like yeah she was she was good yeah uh american gigolo i'll add it to the list richard gear richard gear uh he's the highest paid lover in beverly hills Mm. he leaves women what does that say feeling more alive than they've ever felt before except one so is that the name of his character who drives a mercedes i think his character is jillian and apparently drives a mercedes benz i mean so what would he drive today i think an sl or uh an amg gt would still work today i don't necessarily think his character would drive a crossover (laughs) is he i don't i haven't seen the movie Is is he particularly douchey I picture uh, I picture no, I think, crossover drivers like sport crossover drivers as pretty much the douchiest of the douche. I think what they're saying. I, I think his car, this SL, is like that's how good he is at fucking mm. and being uh, being company. Is he can have the SL drop top. You know, he can afford that. Which everyone else in LA is like an agent or a lawyer, and they have right. the same car. And he's like, my dick gets me that car. I think he drove a Tesla. 
I think you're right. <laughs> probably not. With a white interior. Oh, God. Well, yes, it would show stains less than and black it would have interior. some fucking terrible license plate on it that's something something involving no non-use of gas. Powerful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably, probably a, uh, a Tesla. Um, what's the best place to find best motoring? We covered that. I saw a Model 3 on the street yesterday, and the license plate was to Mars. T O space M A R S. I wanted to fucking slash the That's tires. A, <laughs> in, unless you are flying to work in a very large helicopter, you are not going to Mars. But uh, I mean, whatever. I think it's cool that there is a competition for the space program. But people, some people get a little excited. Yeah. I don't know why when I when I go on Twitter and I go to like searched for you, it brings me to Tesla Roddy, and I didn't know that was a thing. And it's it's. It's the fan. It's the fan community of Tesla, mm-hmm. and their tweets are like aggressively supportive. Oh yeah, it's like, weird. It's really weird. It's really the strange. cars are nice. Yeah, you know, depending on the model. But like, I've just never seen it's a just cult. such chanting. It's like a cult. Rah, rah. It's very yeah, weird. It's a cult. Just like the car or don't like the car. It's like it's it's very Trumpy. It's um, most expensive car crash from best motoring. Oops. I can't remember seeing one. I, that question wasn't up when he was here. Yeah. but I think they were. I don't know. At least I on camera, they were pretty careful. I do remember a couple little ding ding ups, but I don't remember any huge crashes in best motoring. Um, Carl Vogel says, "Do you have a favorite use of schmaltz?" He roasted some chicken thighs and mm-hmm. saved it all because he's hungry and bored. Yes, I do, sir. It goes in the matzo balls. Make yourself a matzo ball soup, and when you're making the matzo balls, which involve eggs, you if you have a KitchenAid mixer, this is the best way to do it. Whip the egg whites into like a super meringue, and then you put them back with the yolks, and then you add the schmaltz, and then you make the matzo balls. Fucking next level. What is schmaltz? Schmaltz is chicken fat. Got it. Yeah, chicken fat. From when you like, if you roast the chicken, it's like the drippings. Yeah, the drippings. Yeah, that's good stuff. So I'm gonna do on my food, my food Instagram plan. I'm gonna make Carl's uh, Chef Carl's matzo ball soup, which is really, really hard to make. It takes all day. It's it's so involved. It's so messy. It uses every dish in my fucking kitchen. It's the kind of dish that you make when you have slaves in the corner to wash all your dishes. You don't want to make it. You have to wash your own dishes. It's really difficult to make. Um, and I'll make it and use the schmaltz for that. Speaking of Carl, very sad news if you hadn't heard. Uh, Vic Henley passed away over the weekend. Vic was uh, a, com- a, a comic. He was pro- one of Carl's best friends. Oh, wow. um, he, he opened for Ron White a bunch. He's a really talented comedian. I was on a uh, Opie podcast with him a couple times. Oh, the, right. From Alabama. Yeah. He ate all the fucking edibles I brought in New right, York. Right, right. He was cutting them out of the tin. Oh, you guys I mean, did like a New York street show sort yeah, of thing, right? Yeah. Oh my God. He was just one of the funniest fucking people. It was so sad that he passed away over the weekend. He had like a, a blood clot or, or something. Oh it my was God. Not coronavirus related or anything, but, but you know, Opie, uh, this guy is fucking crushed, obviously, because, you know, to lose Carl last year and now now Vic and fucking oh, poor guy wow um, but R.I.P. Vic Henley we, we fucking love you buddy sorry super, no, it's down, okay. super I was, downer I was but, page, but there's not enough time um, our, yeah uh, Brandon Martinelli says uh, how often at, if at all have we seen or experienced racism in the car business <laughs> um hmm. uh I mean like overt uh, so I don't know I mean I haven't oh there you go I haven't I haven't personally seen any like overt racism now I have been told by you know I, I've heard that like okay it's difficult for people of color to break into the car media business I've heard that someone once criticized me for not hiring people of color even though the only person I've ever hired is sitting in this room right now <laughs> um, uh, framed a different way Matt a hundred percent of your hires are white <laughs> um I haven't. Per- I've we've. Exp- I've personally witnessed far more sexism in this business. Yeah. people are really terrible towards women in general. Yeah, I've heard some pretty bad stories from. Yeah, various female writers. I've heard. I've heard that a lot more. I, what? Uh, I think I told the story the most. 
I don't I don't, I don't say the most racist thing I saw, but like I went to a car show and it was in Orange County and it was all fucking supercars and you know, it's in tuner cars and a bunch of different stuff and it's kind of Orange County's a nice area. I saw there was one black person there and I watched a cop make him pop his hood. Not maliciously, he it was under the guise that he was curious about the car but the the black kid who was a young kid was driving his shop like he worked for a shop he brought the shop car to the car show it's not his car it's a shop right. car and the cop made him pop his hood in front of me and i told the kid in front of the cop not to pop his hood i was like don't do that fuck hell no I was like, I don't, you don't trust that guy. I don't, you know what I mean? It was, it turned out fine, but like, that was the most like, oh, this guy of all, everyone here, Montana tags on the Senna's and all this shit. And you're going to make this dude pop his hood on his E30. I was like, that's a little, granted, that's not particularly egregious in the grand scheme of racism, but it was enough for me to be like, ooh. It's something you'd have to question. You're like, the cop could have an E30 and be interested, but he also could be very smart. Yeah. And clever and getting someone to pop their hood so that he can write a ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't know which way it's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. In I general, know. though, the sexism is more than the racism. But I mean, it, at press launches, like, it's a lot of white dudes. Yeah. It is a lot of white dudes. Why is it a lot of white dudes? I don't really know. I do know that they're. It's very, 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 very hard to get into this business at all if you don't have some kind of economic security. It's It just is. Uh, you know, and I think there's probably fewer minorities than white folks that have the economic security. Not necessarily that you have to lean on, but you, it's a it's a risky business, and you know, that's 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 it. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Yeah. Um, Greg Howard says he just finished Lexus Pursuit of Perfection. Oh, the after book. He heard yeah. you mention it on an old podcast. Any more automotive book recommendations? He's already read Go Like Hell, and he liked it. Yeah, Go Like Hell and uh, Arsenal, Arsenal of Democracy by A.J. Baim are both great. Um, if you haven't read Enzo Ferrari's biography by Brock Yates, that's interesting. Also, Cannonball, of course, by Brock Yates is great. Uh, Alex's book, Driver. Alex's book, good. The Driver, Cannonball is very good. Is Oh, what's uh, P.J. O'Rourke? P.J. O'Rourke. That uh, book's great. Uh, Drive Like Crazy. Drive Like Crazy. Dri driving great. Like Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely, that's a good one, too. Because that's um, a bunch of stories of just things he did with cars, so it's like it's mm -hmm. not one kind of theme. But man, that like his story, his telling of how he went and explored Baja, you're just like, no one has a spine now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also, you know, our friends Ryan Zumalin, um, his book Slow Car Fast is out. You might want to check that out. It's oh, about and millennial car culture. Blake Wrong's Coffee Table book is out. What? Uh, Someone else writes something. Myers. Oh, Ed Niedermeyer. Yeah. yeah, the other two. If you if you want um, a little more. Uh, sort of uh, current events kind of Ed, Ed Niedermeyer's book L Ludicrous about Tesla is really good and also I'm blanking on who wrote it but it's there's a book called Super Pumped The Battle for Uber which is about how Uber was created and came to be what it is now and uh, also tangentially related to cars and uh, and fairly interesting uh, right on right uh, now I'm reading Sapiens which Zach oh, gave yeah. me you gave me for my birthday two years ago, and I had been staring at it for a while. It's like six hundred pages. Yes, it's a it's a fucking it's dense. It's dense, and I really only read when I travel, and it's so heavy I don't want to carry it. But now I'm reading at home again, so I'm like a hundred pages into it, and I really like it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I wish I read it earlier, uh, but I'm enjoying it now. Yeah, it's a good time to read it. It is a good time to read it. It's thing. it's like a kilogram. It's really heavy. <laughs> I, I I had it on Kindle and I went camping. I was I was like out um, you know away from everything and then reading about human evolution and yeah. how we like killed animals and it was just a really weird contrast to, to be reading that and going I've kind of gone backwards now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Big Johnson Bikes says, uh, "Wow, I bet your I bet the T-shirts your shop makes are just ridiculous. I don't even know if you have a shop." Um, he says, "Thanks for being healthy and dieting, but not pushing on pushing it on us like a jerk." And I then, don't give a fuck what you do. I'm doing I'm doing me. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> I'm you not want. dieting, by the way. I'm just working out every day because I'm not traveling. 
This the irony. I've I've lost some weight. I'm in pretty decent shape for me. But the irony of me, I, people were very nice to me the other day when I put up the T-shirt picture because we got our T-shirts for sale on Blipshift, and I guess I looked kind of thin in the picture. It's a good picture of me. I look on this. I look thin for me, mm-hmm. and people were very nice to me about that, and I appreciate that. I'm not doing anything though. I'm literally just cooking my own food at home, which is healthier than restaurants. I've totally. I've, just, I've learned why I think that is too why? because I don't cook particularly healthy. My cooking is in the Correct. middle, but we don't get appetizers. We right. don't get desserts. You know what I mean? I just cook one a main a main course and a side and that's it. And less drinking. Great point because you because you don't you don't have a menu to look at. And yeah. You're like how much work do I want to put in? Yeah. And if you're gonna have an app like an appetizer, it's like what do we have some cheese I can munch on? And you're not gonna like indulge because you're getting offered all these different yeah. things to draw your attention. And I like, you yeah. know, we're always going to new restaurants, so I, I, I want to try some shit, you know what I mean? Bring it out. What do you got? What can you do? You know, yeah. but so no apps is an easy cutout, and I'm fucking bored, so I'm doing seven days a week <laughs> to the gym. Just doing all the cardio. I'm doing cardio seven days a week, and one of the only people I'm allowing in my house is my trainer, who's been coming, he's been coming in my house the whole time, and um, and so I make him wash his hands, and I clean all the fucking gear, and all the bullshit, but, uh, but uh, so yeah, it's just a ton of exercise, because I got a lot of free time. Yeah, Mike Diaz put up a, a poll on Instagram that was like, uh, are you going to be healthier after quarantine ends or, or less healthy? It was yeah. very interesting to see the different numbers. And most people are going less because yeah. they're like sitting at home, which they're not used to. I mean, people are probably moving less because even like those little walks in an office to the bathroom and yeah. get coffee and stuff like that kind of is worth something. So it just depends on how sedentary you're being. We're forcing it. I think it. the food is different. Yeah, like, it is. Yeah, not eating out is probably much better for most people. Totally, yeah. And and Hannah and I are forcing it. Like, yeah, we're not, she's not walking around her off, an office or whatever, but like in the morning, we take like a three mile walk on the beach and then in the afternoon, I do cardio and gym and so I think it's it's evening out. The same, I am losing weight in quarantine. I'm not gaining weight, which is nice. Um, if right. I went to prison, I would definitely just be doing push-ups and shit in my cell the whole fucking I'd time. Be, I would do so many steroids before I went to jail. <laughs> I would come out of jail I would, fucking immediately. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would be. I'd, my spirit I would, would be crushed, man. but I'd be strong. Whew. Uh, Joseph Regan says, "What's the best bourbon for less than fifty bucks, or maybe around a hundred? Thanks for uh, keeping his Instagram full of delicious food." I don't know where you buy it, but my favorite cheap bourbon to drink, and cheap is the wrong word, affordable bourbon to drink, is by Taconic Distillery. Maybe Zach can find a picture of it. Um, it is uh, it is their single barrel bourbon by Taconic Distillery. They're out of New York. Um, a friend of mine is one of their uh, head distillers, and he is uh, a genius and they i drink this stuff i get it out of new york and i I carry a couple bottles when i come home which is the one uh i think it's the bottle on the left this is straight straight bourbon whiskey it's like 49 50 bucks a bottle great over uh rocks very very drinkable that's what i'm that's what i'm fucking with for uh for just drinking uh and and not being the kind of not not like collector level yeah duchess private reserve that's it oh wow you can ship now it's 80 dollars Oh, what, 80 bucks? Wow, they've, 80 they've bucks. raised the prices a little bit. It's a little cheaper if you buy it in New York, I guess, than if you buy it on the internets. Yeah. Well, he um, asked for 50, $50 range and $100. I think, yeah. I think, uh, fuck, what's it called? Blanton's. Blanton's is like 60. See, depending depends where, you where you're going. Depending where you go. Dep- Blanton's is, is generally my favorite, but I, it's, it's it's spiked recently with demand I think but that it's generally between 65 and 85 for for Blanton's which I really like as well I think there's some like I don't know like monkey shoulder and stuff that I think are I can drink they're all like small craft companies I mm. see at the bar and I've tried all and they're, they're all pretty good they're not that expensive yeah. and they're all just like that yeah I think there's a lot of, I mean, bourbon is, you know, there's a, there's more bourbons than there's ever been right now. I mean, well, I can't say that definitively, but there's a fucking lot. So, um, we'll get Johnny back on. Uh, did I book it yet? Yeah, I think he's next week. I think week. I booked it, right? Next week, we'll do Johnny Lieberman is... 16th. The 16th. 16th. Yes, the 16th, Johnny Lieberman will be here and we'll talk about bourbon. Um, and that is that the game is the game. All righty. Well, right on time. That's 90 minutes fucking almost exactly. Wow. Yeah. The right amount of questions. All right, folks. Well, that was a good show. We did an arrow with Taro. 30 questions. I like it. Uh, we are back live Saturday, April 11th, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Alex Roy will be checking in from NoHo Sound. 
uh, on the East Coast. And then you can also mark your calendars. We got April 14th, regular car reviews is on the show. April 16th, Johnny Lieberman is on the show. April 20th, Johnny Smith is on the show of Smith and Sniff from the UK. Awesome. And then April 23rd, it's actually going to be UK week, uh, April 20th, because April 20th, we got Johnny Smith from England. And then April 23rd, we've got Ted Gashu calling in, who is quarantined on Damien Hurst's houseboat in the, Ta- the Thames River in London. <laughs> on the river? <laughs> yeah, he's on the river. Look at, if you get his, uh, his Instagram is, uh, is Ted Gashu. G U yeah that's the boat right yeah he's got a houseboat in the Thames that's it yeah and and Ted's living on it <laughs> what <laughs> yeah it rules Picture, it's all over his Instagram it's sick. great I'll find it. um we had one late super chat come in and oh. the donation was worthy of just hitting so uh this is Ryan Rask and last question everybody um his father-in-law is looking for a Florida car mm. two people and two golf bags. He would prefer a manual. He wants an Aston, but will those oh. fit two golf bags? CTSV six speed wagon is also a strong contender. I mean, just well, answer to the okay, question. Okay, hang on a second. Um, Aston's two golf bags. Answer some. Um, the DB nines, and I think the newer second gen Vanquish, current gen DBS will. However, they're not manual. If you want a deep uh, 09 to 11 DBS, I believe that will hold two golf bags in the trunk. Great car. So sexy. Very, Ooh. very cool car. Uh, I also believe that the new, no, I, mm, uh, mm, manual two golf bags, a lot of Corvette. There's a lot of Corvette you can buy ZR, C7, C7 Corvettes leftovers for sure. Definitely manual gearboxes all over the place, big trunks. Um, Does he need to be able to carry people? Because like the cars he, said he two listed, people. he said are, two people golf bags. But then why would he want a CTSV wagon? Other than the fact that it's awesome, because they're fast and cool and awesome. Right. I think I mean, it, the people have a problem with this, right? Asking with how they ask because it's like these two cars are awesome, right? But if you don't need to carry more people, you shouldn't get that big car. You know what I mean? Keep it small. Get the smallest car that you need for your task. True. Right? Because small is better. It's lighter. It's more fun. It's more agile. It's, you know, right? I th- I think. Or maybe not. Yeah, I think. How much bigger is a CTSV wagon than an, a DBS? Like, I mean, it's Aston's not don't huge. feel small. No. Like even, well, that's because you yeah. sit down right. in it and look over the, the, yeah. the, 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 the hood. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a but the two golf bags it really limits you right you're talking yeah. about now you're talking about Merce- you need uh, GT style cars maybe an AMG GT an Alexis LC five hundred these are not manual transmission cars LC five hundred be very nice yeah not manual I, yeah uh, I, how about I, a Shelby yes. GT three fifty a Shelby GT three fifty is manual gearbox a BMW M four you can get with a manual gearbox. Um, yeah, you can get M three, but you don't need that. High, I, I mean, higher at the higher end though. It's just it's tough to find those. You should go Aston. You yeah, could also go, go for a used oh like a Ferrari six twelve. Those are out there with manuals. Get a five fifty. Can get those. Never look back. Five fifty. I don't know about the trunk. I've never tried. Doesn't matter. Golf is stupid. <laughs> just drive your five fifty around. Golf, golf back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. On the well straightaways. Oh, that's all they have out there in Florida. But that'd be pretty sick. Oh, um, he said uh, thanks. He just parked. Uh, he has an F-150 and an Edge ST for a daily. I mean, all right, then an Aston would be an Aston a very would be nice, nice change. Yeah. Check your golf bags, but I think t- 2009 to 2011 DBS is the biggest trunk Aston Martin that you can get with a manual transmission. I love someone said, take up disc golf and buy, buy a C8, but you can t- <laughs> do disc golf and you can buy anything. You can fit a C8. You can fit a set of golf clubs in a C8. That's why it has a big That's Camaro a big butt. But with mm-hmm. the, uh, well, it's almost like like a pedestal flip sideways. Yeah. It's got like a bell <laughs> shape, and yeah. it's that. There's the golf bag groove. Yeah, in the back, definitely. Um, that right. is the game. That is the that game. Is the game. Thanks for listening, folks. We will see you next time. I already went through the schedule. That's that's what it's gonna be. Follow us on all the places. The Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone connection to the internet and ideally something to say. Shirts on sale on Blipshift through April 16th, then they gone forever. Get them now. Bye.